Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I am sharing with you how to crochet a ribbed tea cozy for any size teapot. For the tutorial today I'm going to be taking you through the three main sizes of traditionally shaped teapots such as this one here which is a six cup teapot. I'm also going to give you the sizes for the two cup and the ten cup. Now the ten cup is quite a special teapot I bought it from a cook shop and I've just bought it for those extra large gatherings and it literally is like something you'll find in a church hall. If you're ever taken to some kind of church event, most likely you've seen a teapot this large with a handle in the front and this teapot cosy will allow you to circumnavigate the handle so it's still easy to use when it's that large. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out another one of my crochet patterns or tutorials again. Let's find out the materials we need to make our very own ribbed tea cozy. This pattern doesn't need an awful lot of yarn, even if you're making the biggest of all tea cozies. You're still only going to need one ball of chunky and a bit of scrap if you want to change colours. Now the yarn that I'm using today is one of my favourites. It's the Paint Box Yarns Simply Chunky and it's marked as a size 5 bulky weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic. I find that for projects like this where there's drinks involved, I want it to be able, especially drinks that are likely to stain, I want the yarn to be water resistant. And acrylic is water resistant, it won't absorb as much as a natural fibre would. So I'm going to go for this 100% acrylic. Now the shade that I'm using, I believe this is Dusky Purple. It's an old shade, I can't remember the name of it, but it's shade number 346. And I'm going to change with some stripes in there using this white as well. Goodness, this is old. Um, shade number 300. I think it's paper white is the official term. So we're going to be using some bulky weight yarn, so chunky yarn in the UK. And I'm going to be using a six millimeter crochet hook. I really like using these Furls resin hooks with this acrylic yarn. They really work well together and the tip of the hook is enough to work the stitches that we're going to be using. Now this is a ribbed teapot so we are of course going to be doing a lot of back loop only work. Just a six millimeter crochet hook whichever you have to hand. Now if you have a more unusual shape of teapot cozy or one that's a different height or it's a bit more squat you are going to need a tape measure. So this can help you check that the teapot sizes that I've used are the same as the teapot you're using or your, the cosy that you're making for. Now, if you're changing colours, you're going to need a pair of scissors. And of course, we're all going to need a dyeing needle. You're also going to need one small button because that's how we do the close on this teapot cosy. Just a small looped chain and a button to go through it. So gather all of your materials and we can measure our teapots. To check the size of your teapot, I measure from the edge of the spout around to the handle. Whether you're using centimetres or inches, just measure, put the end of the tape at the biggest or the widest part of your spout around to the edge of your handle and it will give you a measurement. So for this six inch teapot, we're looking at about seven and a half inches around. So to measure the height, I'm going to place my tape measure in the middle of the top of the teapot lid that's what that is and then just move it and loosely hold it down so that the tape sits underneath so here you can see that this is going to measure seven inches long or high as the case may be and you can do the same in centimeters so that's the sizing that um, I'm going to make in this video but I'm going to give you the sizings for a two cup pot as well which measures five and a half inches tall and six inches wide and then that big whopper of a ten cup teapot I feel like I should show you what it looks like. Let me grab it. Just to give you an idea of the size difference here. Can I fit this? No, it literally fills the screen. So for this giant 10 cup with a handle, it would measure a whopping 11 inches wide. You can't even see the top on screen. But believe me when I say it's a good 10 inches tall. This is very much an extreme teapot, but they do exist. I have one and the whole reason behind this pattern is because of this size teapot. Someone asked me to create a pattern for this giant size teapot. They couldn't work it out themselves. And I just went the whole hog and made all three sizes. So once you've got your measurements, if you need to double check which size to make for your teapot, you can find a link in the description box for the written pattern. And you can also find um, details of which pattern fits which teapot. 
So if you're happy with which size teapot cosy you're making, I'm going to tell you where to make your size adjustments if your teapot is a different size. Let's gather those materials and we can get started. Have your teapot to hand when we're going to do our starting chain because it's going to allow you to check the height of your teapot cosy against the height of your teapot. Now we're going to start by making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. And then if you're making a standard size teapot, either for the two cup, you need to make a chain of 18. For a six cup, you are going to need to make a starting chain of 23. And for that extra large 10 cup teapot, you're going to need to make a chain of 31. So make your chain and then we're going to check it against the height of our teapot cozies. So that's one, two, three, four, five, 21. 22 and 23. So let's see how we check the length of our chain against the height of our teapot. So all I'm doing is just checking that the bottom stitch where the slip knot is and the top of the chain sits comfortably on the height of this teapot. The reason it can't be stretched is because at the end of the pattern we're going to cinch in the top and that will reduce some of the height so you do want it to be nice and loose maybe even with one of the chains sat on the table all the way up to the top of your teapot cozy you don't want it extra long but you really don't want it too short we want it to sit right at the base of our teapot cozy so if you're adjusting your pattern to fit your own teapot cozy just make sure that your chain sits comfortably without with a minimal stretch or no stretch right up to the top of your teapot handle. No, teapot lid. Once you have the correct chain length for your start, remember if you're doing a two pot, you only need a chain of 18. This six pot is a chain of 23, and that large teapot cozy is gonna be a chain of 31. If you've made an adjustment, make a note of how many chains you've made. Remember to count your chain, you just need to count one side of your Vs, and this loop doesn't count as a chain. Make a note of how many chains you have, and then we can make sure you've got the right stitch count at the end of the next row. So for row one, each side is gonna start by working one US half double crochet into the second chain from hook. So to do the US half double crochet, which is the same as a UK half treble crochet, we start by yarning over the hook. That's our first chain right underneath our hook, and we don't work into that one. We're gonna work into that second chain. So we yarn over the hook, insert underneath that loop of our chain, yarn over the hook to bring up a third loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to work one half double crochet into each chain across. And at the end of row one, if you're making the two cup size teapot cozy, you're going to have a stitch count of 17. The six cup will have a stitch count of 22 and that super large will have a stitch count of 30. If you're making your own size teapot cozy, your stitch count will be one less than your starting chain. So keep working down to the bottom of your starting chain, working one half double crochet into each chain, and I'll meet you there. So at the end of row one, you should have one half double crochet in each of your chains. So the stitch count will be 17, 22, or 30. Once again, if you're doing your own size teapot cozy, just double check that your chain and your first row reaches the top of your teapot lid comfortably without excessively stretching. So going into row two, we're gonna start by making a turning chain of one. And then throughout this pattern, we're going to be working into the back loop only of our stitches. So remembering that this is your chain, we're not working into that. We're working into that back loop. So the loop of the stitch that is furthest away from you. So we're going to yarn over the hook and instead of inserting our hook underneath both loops of our stitch, we're going to insert from the middle of the stitch just to pick up that back loop. We yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we're working one US half double crochet into the back loop only of each stitch along. If you're intending to work your teapot cozy in just one solid color, you can continue now to repeat row two, which we're working now. You can continue to repeat row two for a total of 
certain number of rows depending on which size you're making. So if you're making a two cup teapot, you just need to do a total of nine rows. For that six cup, you're doing a total of 15 rows. And for your 10 cup teapot cozy, you're gonna be doing a total of 20 rows. If you want to change colours, um, like I did in my other teapot cozy here, I'm gonna show you how to change the colour in row three. To count your rows, it's quite a nice way to count them really. I like working ribbon because it is easy to count. So you can see here, you've got your uh, my first row that I did, ignore that, I've still got to put a button on this one. So this is our first row and there's our starting chain. There's row two, row three, row four. So it's almost like you can see where this raised edge is, there's two rows. So you've got row one, row two, row three, row four. So you can just count the ridges. So two, four, six, eight, ten, etc. It makes it really quick and easy to count those ribbed rows. So if you're working in one colour, you can continue now. For the smallest teapot, you just need nine rows. For the medium or our six cup, you need a total of 15 rows. And then for our larger teapot, you need 20 rows. If you want to change colour, meet me back at the end of row three, where I'm going to be changing to my white. And I'll show you the quickest way to do that while weaving your ends in at the same time. So if you're looking to change colour in your teapot rows, I've done rows one, two, and this is row three. And I'm going to change every three rows to create my striped teapot cosy. Before I change colours and going into row four, I'm going to pull back this last stitch to show you how I would really do a colour change. So I go halfway through that last stitch and stop just before I do that last yarn over and pull through. To complete that yarn over and pull through, I grab my contrasting colour and place it over my hook with the tail behind me and just bring that through those three loops to complete that stitch. I've pulled down on that original colour, ready to start working with my new colour. It's as simple as that. Now, if you want to make it easier on yourself for weaving those ends in, we are going to fasten off our main colour. So I'm going to do that first. So I'm just going to grab my main colour and leaving a tail, just snip that off, move that one out of the way. And then I'm ready just to continue with my new colour. I'm going to do my turning chain of one, turn my work, and I'm going to bring my ends around with me. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to keep them on the wrong side of my project. So where this ridge is here on row two, this is the right side of my project facing me. So I want my ends to be on the wrong side. So it gets a little bit fiddly. I'm just gonna pull them up out of the way in a moment. We're gonna to continue to work one half double crochet into each stitch across. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook, go in underneath that, those tails of those color changes, and then insert my hook into the back loop. Just hold those all together, yarn over, bring my loop through. So I've got my three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. If I give those a gentle pull, you can see that they're practically invisible and the colour change can't be seen either. And we're just going to continue with our um, half double crochets into the back loop. So to continue it, I just simply yarn over the hook, go in underneath those tails of colour and through that back loop of the stitch. Yarn over to bring my third loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's going to help weave those ends in and make them practically impossible to see. So continue to work your total number of rows that you need for your size. Remember, if you're doing two cup cosy, you need a total of nine rows. For the six cup that I'm making here, we're going to need a total of 15 rows. And then for the big teapot, we're going to need a total of 20 rows. So work all the rows that you need and remember to change colour where you need to. And I will meet you at the end of those rows so we can work the opening of our spout. So once you've completed all of those rows, you should be able to, if I turn this around, <laughs> you should be between your handle and your spout quite comfortably with a slight stretch. You don't want to be kind of pulling it taut to get it around. You just want it to sit comfortably between the handle and the spout. Now I'm at the top here of my spout, working this way around my teapots. 
and we should be at the top of our spout. So if we were to measure this now with a slight stretch, it should measure the same width as our tea cozy, which for me was seven and a half inches. So that's how wide your tea cozy needs to be, so at your widest point of your teapot. If you need to adjust the number of rows, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you make a note of how many rows you do and we are ready to start on the top of our spout. So to do that, we're going to change our stitches now. Let me move this out of the way. Now I'm on row 15 and in theory I should now be working in my main colour, but this is where T is going to be. So I'm sticking to my main colour here in this purple to work the next few rows and I'll do my colour changes on the other side of the tea cosy. No one will notice. In fact, you can see on this tea cosy here is exactly what I've done. I've just kept the opening all the same colour. You can change colour. We're working these three rows next. I just didn't. I mean, I suppose you could. It depends how bothered you are by it. I wasn't. I'm just sticking with my main colour. So we should all be at the same point. So I'm not going to give you row counts at this point. We're just all on the same row number. So we start by making a turning chain of one and then we're ready to work into our back loops to create our spout opening or the top of our spout opening because obviously there's two ends. We're going to start by working one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. Oops. And then you need to work as many as you need to get down to your spout opening. So I've calculated this based on the teapots that I have. So if you are making a two cup, you will work four more single crochets into the back loop only. Like me, if you're doing the traditional six cup with a lower spout, we're going to work a single crochet into the next nine stitches. If you're making that massive teapot with the handle, you only need to work one more, a single crochet into the next seven. So we're just going to continue working into the back loop only working our US single crochet, the same as our UK double crochet. So I'm going to be making a total of 10. So work the number of stitches and then we'll have a look on our teapots to see how that looks. This is the total number of stitches I need. If I bring my teapot in again, you can see that from the top of my lid here down to my spout, it's going to leave a slight opening. I mean, you can go down further if you want to, to make it an absolute tight fit. So in this completed teapot, you see it leaves a slight gap. You can always go down a few more stitches if you want to. I just think it makes it a bit easier to get the teapot cozy on and off. Once you're happy with the number of stitches that you've made, if you stuck to the pattern, um, if you have the two cup, you will have five single crochets. The six cup will have 10 single crochets and the larger teapot will have seven single crochets down to the handle. We're gonna leave the remainder of these stitches unworked and move on to our next row. So we chain one and turn our work. And then we're gonna work one US single crochet into the back loop only again, into each of the stitches across. So work one single crochet into each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of this row. So at the end of this row, if you're doing the two pot, you will have five single crochets. I've got 10 single crochets and the larger pot will have seven. Obviously, if you've made an adjustment to the opening of your teapot cozy. Make sure you've worked the right number of stitches that you worked in the previous row. In the next row, we're going to chain one to turn and we're going to work into the back loops only once again, working one US single crochet into each stitch across and I'll meet you ready to work the final part of this row. So I've worked into all of my stitches across and I've come to the end of this row. But what we're going to do here is we're going to create a chain that we join down here for the bottom closing of our teapot cozy. Now this opening at the bottom won't be as wide because as you can see on this teapot cozy, we want it to be a nice firm close at the bottom of that spout. So once you've worked your single crochets into that back loop down, if you're making a two pot teacup, you're going to work a chain of nine. The six cup is also a chain of nine and that larger pot is a chain of 19 and that allows you to go around the handle all the way down. So make a chain of nine, nine or 18. That's one, two. If you have adjusted your stitch counts, what you need to do is to make a chain large enough to leave three or four stitches to be worked at the bottom. 
we're going to skip the same number of stitches as our chain. So I'm going to skip nine stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. And then we're going to insert our hook under the next stitch and work one single crochet into that stitch and the remaining stitches. That's one, two and three. Continue to fill all the stitches you have remaining and if you've adjusted your opening make sure that you skip the same number of stitches as your chain. I'm just going to bring up my loop and bring in my teapot because this is another great time just to pop your teapot cozy on making sure you've got it all the way up to the top and making sure that your opening stretches wide enough down to the bottom of your pot too. Absolutely perfect. Well, of course it is. I'm following my pattern. But you know what I mean? Just make sure that you're comfortable with how that opens. When you've worked a couple of more rows, it will just stay in place and it's a really nice opening for your tea cosy. So at this point, I'm just going to make it really clear that this section at the top is the top of our tea cosy and this smaller section here is the bottom. That's really important when it comes to doing our edging. So if you want, you can pop a stitch marker into the bottom opening so that you know when it comes to our edging where you're going to be attaching your yarn or reattaching your yarn. So I'm going to pop my yarn back on my hook after trying that on and then we are ready to finish our opening. So, so we're going to start by working one US half double crochet. We're going back to that slightly larger stitch, again working into that back loop only. So work one half double crochet into each stitch across to your chain. That's my last one there. And then I'm going to share my secret with you when it comes to working into your chains to create a really nice opening. Now, as always, you can see you've got your normal chain facing you here with the Vs, but we're going to flip our chain over and you can see you've got these bumps in the back. They're a bit more obvious there. So there's one, two, three. And you have the same number of bumps as you have chains. What I'm going to recommend that you do is work into the back bumps of your chains because that will leave the other side of the chain facing the opening and give it a really neat opening. There's no need to then go back and work over your opening to keep it really neat. So I'm turning my, my chain before I start. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to locate my first back bump. So you can count down if you've got a chain of nine like me. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number nine is that really awkward one just here. If need be, you can grab your needle and just pop it underneath that back loop give it a tug just to make it a bit more obvious and a bit easier to work into. I'm going to insert my hook underneath that first back bump, bring my hook back through to bring up my third loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we're continuing with our half double crochet. And once you've done that first one, the next back bump ap appears a little bit easier. So it's just there. So we yarn over, insert our hook underneath that back bump, all the strands. Yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And what's happening is you can see the other side of the chain is being left behind. So it matches the finish on the other side of the opening. So continue to work one half double crochet into each back bump of your chain. And I will meet you once you've completed working along your chain. So I've just got one more to work. It's a little bit less obvious to find. I've just counted my stitches to check I've got them all. I'm just working this last one here. And then for the rest of the row, we carry on as normal, working one US half double crochet into each stitch across. As you can see, my first stitch has become twisted down a little bit. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm tilting my work towards me to find that loop that I need to work into. So we're going into that back loop only. And then continuing to work one half double crochet into each back loop across. At the end of this row, your stitch count will be back to its normal total. So if you're following the pattern and making a six cup teapot, you'll have a stitch count of 22. For that two cup, you'll have a stitch count of 17. And for those larger pots, you're gonna have your stitch count back to a total of 30. So that completes the spout opening. So it's nice and wide at the top, 
a little bit closed in at the bottom so that it fits around the base of your teapot comfortably. So from here, we're just working the same number of rows that we did to begin. So if you're making your two cup teapot, you're gonna continue um, to you have a total of 22 rows. So you need to work a further nine rows. For this size, we're going to make a further 15 rows. And then for the large, you're making a further of 20 rows. If you're changing colours in the same format, you're going to need to work two more rows before you make your first colour change and then change colours every three rows again. So continue to work until you have the total number of row rows. You'll be able to fold your teapot in half and there'll be the same number of rows all the way up. And then we're going to cinch closed our teapot cosy and add on our button. If, of course, you need to check in with the written pattern at any time, it is linked for you in the description box. If you have any questions, don't forget to pop those in the comments for me. And I will see you in a few moments. We're going to add on our edging and, of course, then close our teapot. So once you've worked the number of rows you need to match the other side of your teapot cosy, all we need to do is simply fasten off. And to do that, I'm going to make a little chain one and then just snip off, leaving a long-ish tail because we're going to use this tail for something else shortly. So fasten off, leaving a long tail because that's the top. Remember that the shorter part of our opening is the bottom of our teapot cosy. So once you've done that, make sure that you have the right side of your project facing you, the smaller part of the opening at the top, because this is where we're going to work our edging. We're going to start by joining our yarn in that first corner stitch. So I'm simply just going to pop my hook through the stitch and pick up my main colour and just bring that through with my hook and make a chain of one. One single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. So we just insert our hook back into where we worked our chain one, bring it back up and pull through two. So we're just working into the row ends. You can see here we've worked into the edge. That's kind of our corner, so it doesn't really count. But when you're looking at it from here, where this ridge is, that's a row end, and this is the other row end. So it's important we're not working too many stitches around here because it is really tempting to put lots of stitches in because there's holes to work into. So this first one that we've worked does not count as working into the row end. We've actually worked on the other end of our chain here. So we're going to insert our hook kind of underneath this little bump here, which is the row end. And we just need to work another single crochet. Here where our ridge is, is another row end. So you can see you've got that loop where we turned. So we can go in here and then the next row is going to be where that lump is again. So if you familiarise yourself with where the row ends are, then you can make sure that you're working into the same places on each row. So the easiest way to decrease is we're going to work two single crochets followed by a single crochet two together across the next two row ends. So that's row, that's stitch number one. We've worked this row, so this is the next row we need to work into. So ignore this hole here, it's this hole that we want to go into just there. So ignore the big one and go into the next one and work another single crochet. And then we're going to decrease across the next two row ends. So we've worked this ridge row with this stitch. So we're going to go under here and then under the white row. So we're going to insert our hook underneath. Yarn over, bring a loop up. And then for our decrease, because that's this row, we're going to go into this row here and insert our hook again, working over my end at the same time here. Bring a second or a third loop up for our single crochet two together. So we just yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we've worked into the white row here. So we're going to move on and work under that next row end here. So working one single crochet into the next. There's the next row. So working another single crochet into the next before we decrease again across the next two rows. Make sure I'm putting your hook in the right place. So that's one. And then to decrease, we're going into that white row. And we just yarn over and pull through all three loops. 
I'm just going to continue to repeat this across all the row ends, working one single crochet into the next two ends of the rows before decreasing across the next two rows. And you can see that that's really going to bring, if I hold it up the right way up, you can see that that's going to bring the bottom of the teapot cosy inwards and give it a nice shape to the bottom of our teapot cosy. So continue to repeat that around. So you're working one single crochet into each of the next two row ends before working a decrease across the next two rows. Once you've completed that, I'm going to meet you ready to cinch in the tops of our teapot cosies. So we can, can then add our pom-pom if we wish and complete the pattern. I will see you in a few moments once you've cinched in the bottom with these decreased stitches. It's working my final stitch along the bottom and before we fasten off, because this is the bottom of our tea cosy, I'm going to create a little loop to help close around our button. So once you're happy with the amount that you've cinched in around your bottom of your teapot cosy, we're simply going to make a chain of eight. So we yarn over and pull through eight times. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And then we can slip stitch back to the same place just by inserting our hook where our chain came out of. Yarn over, pull through and straight through the loop on your hook to slip stitch that. If you want to, you can make another little chain one to secure and then we can fasten this off. And when we pull that nice and tight, it's created our little button band. So when you bring those ends together, this is where you're going to place and sew on your button. But before we do that, let's cinch in the top of our teapot cosy. So this is the wrong side of my teapot cosy. And I'm gonna grab my darning needle first and foremost, and just pop that onto my needle. And if we have it facing, so the wrong side is facing us, we're going to weave in and out of all of these rows around. And when we pull tight, it's going to bring the teapot cosy together. And all I'm going to do is loop through that top stitch of each raised rib. So you're not going through every row, it's you're going through every other row, just picking up. And you can pull through and then just continue working through that raised row of your ribbing and it just makes it a bit easier when you're cinching to not have too much bulk at the top of your teapot cosy. So continue to repeat that around until you've been through all of your raised rows and I'll meet you in a moment. So when you've reached your last row and where your other tail is, just pull your needle all the way through. You can see mine's already starting to curl in which is good and then just pull tightly on the thread that's against your needle and that's going to bring closed the top of your teapot. Now I'm just going to straighten that out so it's creating a curve and just bring my needle through that first row again just so we have something to tighten onto and that completes that circle and as I pull, I want that one as well, where's that? It just brings in the top of the teapot cosy. You can use your other tail, if you haven't woven it in, to secure those together with a knot and that will bring closed what any, any remaining hole nice and tightly. I am going to pop a pom-pom so don't worry if you have a slight hole there. Once you have your pom-pom on top no one will notice any remaining hole. I'm just going to double knot this once again so it's nice and secure and it's not coming undone. And then the final thing to do, you may need your teapot for this, is to, I'm gonna pop my teapot on at the front and then ease it over. And when you bring it around, we need to, we need to sew so close the area that is going to be over the top of the handle. 
So we're going to use what's left of our needle to sew or whip stitch around these this opening here. You can, don't have to go all the way down, you just go down to the lid if you want, just doing a number of stitches. So check you can count down how many stitches I have given some ideas for it depending on which size I'm going to be sewing up seven stitches and to do that it's very easy so just move that out of the way I still have my thread on my needle from where I just cinched close the top and I'm just going to go through one side of the teapot cozy and then through the other so that was one and just bring it through you can do it as a whip stitch, you can do it as a mattress stitch, whichever you feel is more neat. And just work through the corresponding stitches to over the number of stitches you want to close. And as you pull tightly, making sure that it looks like a neat seam. I find this works the best way of doing it, just simply bringing it back over through the next stitch and then through the corresponding stitch on the other side. Bring it through and it creates a really neat seam that no one will see. And just do that for the total number of stitches you need. You can have it sat on your teapot whilst you're doing this if you really want to, to get the exact number. But I'm just doing six or seven stitches to bring them together so it's not so much of a large opening. And once you've done enough stitches, make sure that the seam is nice and tight no one's going to see that and i'm just going to go back through again and tie a knot i might do that again around the other side of the opening and all that is left to do is to weave in any remaining ends if you want to you can adorn the top of your teapot cozy with with a pom-pom and you have your well-fitting personalized teapot cozy you do of course need to add your button on to close once you've got it in position you can mark where you want your button to go and it is that easy to make a well-fitting teapot cozy to fit any teapot size. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've made your very own teapot cozy. If you have, do tag me on social media using at Cozy Rosie UK so I can see your completed teapot cozy and celebrate your success. If you haven't already, make sure that you've hit the subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you don't miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials or patterns again. And I will see you in the next video.